Welcome to Casual Swinger. If you're under 18, the following podcast is not appropriate for you. The subjects and language are for mature audiences only. If you're not mature in nature, just make sure you're old enough to vote. We don't take ourselves seriously, ever. No guarantee is given regarding the accuracy of any opinions or statements made on this podcast, our website, or our blog. It's all in fun, folks. This isn't Dr. Phil. Now, consider yourself the listener properly advised. Welcome back to Casual Swinger. I'm Mallory. I'm so glad you remembered your name this week. (laughs) I did. I'm Mickey. (laughs) And we're so excited to have everyone listening this week. Um, We have a little something different on the docket. I think this is a lot different. So obviously we do talk about Hedo a lot, which when you guys are listening to this right now, that's where we are. Yeah. We're at Hedo. Soaking up sun and drinks. Yeah. 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 In my head, I'm already there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm ready, but I'm not ready. And by the way, don't hate, just masturbate. (sighs) Oh. I don't want to masturbate. I already had sex today. <laughs> it was good. Thanks for that. Yeah. I got back from taking the boy to school and you were like, hey. Yeah, I was, like, I was hey. ready. I was so ready. Yeah. And what else is different? We got new audio gear this week. We did. We did. This looks very professional. I'm I'm shaking with excitement. And I you're looking at the mixer bus- buttons right now. Do not play with the sound effects. I just want to touch the button. I know you do. Can I just touch one of them? I don't think our listeners will appreciate that. No, I don't think they will either. So it's funny because uh, Kate and Daryl from Swinging Down Under, and this was totally unplanned, totally unplanned, got basically the same setup oh, shit. like a week before we got ours. <laughs> and so she thinks I'm a copycat asshole. She's like, fuck you, you suck. And I'm like, no, no, seriously, it's just good stuff. And yeah. That's why I bought it. Great and, minds think alike, right? Well, I don't know. She has a great mind. I'm just an asshole. But it, uh, it is amazing stuff. So now there's probably two shows with decent audio because, uh, well, maybe she figured out how to use theirs before we did. But Yeah. Yeah. We're winging it this morning. Yeah. We're totally figuring it out. But this show is a really big deal for us. We've been planning this show for you guys since November. Yeah, since before November because we um, coordinated these interviews before we even got to Jamaica. And we did. And so this interview uh, today, this show, which is season one, episode 14 of Casual Swinger, is called A Living History of Hedonism 2. And this piece is called The Ultimate Ambassador. Perfect title. Yeah. Perfect title for uh, the person that we interviewed. Um, Howard um, is the gentleman, and you'll get to learn a lot about him, a lot about the resort, a lot about the history. But he is literally the ultimate ambassador. He's been going there for, what, 38 years? Yeah, he's been going there since it was Negro Beach Village, Yeah, which is absolutely insane. Uh, but before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about, you know, what we're going to be doing this week at Hedo. Um, first of which there's no segment today. So no, this episode no. is going to be just our beginning here. And then we're going to get into our, our, our interview. We have actually two interviews that we did with Howard on the beach. That's true. So if you hear waves in the background and it sounds like we're at Hedo, it's cause we were, and we are. And that was fun. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> and, you know, that's when we got the idea for the Naked Truth to do interviews ass naked because we were all ass naked and we did, did the interview. Yeah. So that was kind of fun. Um, but what are we doing? So we play a game on Twitter. Uh, so a lot of people, if you guys have been with us with Rachel's Rascals or you've been to the be- uh, Tejito while we're there, you'll notice, you'll see me from a mile away because I wear outrageous top hats when he says outrageous i mean some of these things are three feet tall he's not kidding which is great for me because then i never lose you i always know where you're at um (laughs) right but he stuffs an object and it usually relates to the day it relates to the day or what we're doing or maybe it's something sexy and he sticks it under his hat so throughout the day you have to guess what's under the hat and this is on the beach, this is on social media, and we're bringing it to our listeners at least, what, twice while we we're there? We are. We're going to do it twice while we're there. And the game is called What's Under My Hat. Yes. It's really simple. I'm going to post a picture on Twitter, and you guys have to guess what's under my hat. This It's one of my favorite parts of the trip because people will come up with some outlandish shit. They really do. And, like, is I it wanna, a gnome? Do you have I, a yard gnome under your hat? I, I want to give them prizes just for like great creative Right. Like, sure know, thing. Guesses. I packed a fucking yard gnome and brought it to hedonism <laughs> and put it under my hat. You're a genius. How the hell did you think of that? <laughs> I love that. Is it a threesome? Oh, wait a minute. What about Super Dave and Sea Monkeys? 
Oh, every day. sea monkeys. One day I have to put fucking sea monkeys under my hat because he guessed it every Every day. single day. Every day. So I put something under my hat. You guys guess what it is and you win cool casual swinger swag. Now, we will give you the opportunity to pick whether you want casual swinger swag or hedo bum swag, which you mm-hmm. guys don't know is we're a production of a company called Hedo Bum. Uh, what that means is that's our little production company that runs our podcast and Hedo Bum because we love the hedonist lifestyle. Uh, is why we called it Hito Bum. We Mm -hmm. love the pursuit of pleasure. And uh, we can put that on any of our shirts as well for you guys. So if we do any swag for you guys, it could be Hito Bum branded or casual swinger branded. Excellent. So are you actually ready for this week? Mm. Like, I feel ready, but I'm looking out at our empty suitcases going, hmm. Yeah, I I think you packed enough medication to save the island from any calamity that might befall them, though. Hey, do not call out my paranoias and my Uh, idiosyncrasies. I'm going to be naked all week, so I don't really need clothes. I need a t-shirt to get there. I always over-prepare. I know you do. Always over-prepare, because stuff like that's harder to get down there. Yeah, well, the things we really need are the stuff for our games. Yes. So, like, what kind of games uh, are we playing this week? Do you want to talk about those a little bit? People might get a kick out of that. We have so many, (laughs) so many games planned. Uh, My favorite is going to be probably Rascal Feedy, which is essentially finger painting without fingers. Yeah, and we don't have canvas, so that's got to be your partner. Yeah, so you, there's a canvas, Mm -hmm. um, and then there's an artist or artist's and it, it turns into either a human slipping slide or uh, the, what was it, the frog jumps? Oh, yeah. on Where she painted her pussy last year. Oh, she put pussy year. lips all the way up his all, chest. All the way so, down. So naturally, that she he gets on the ground, or she gets on the ground, and he's like, fine, turnabout's fair play. He puts paint all over the underside oh, of yeah, his balls, Spartan. squats yeah. over her face, and gives her a Spartan helmet down the front of her face. Her His balls were in her eye sockets. <laughs> and his, his cock print was down her, her nose. And it just and then, of course, they just started wrestling, and it they look like they were covered in shit, because if you if you combine every, every color, color together, it's brown. It's all, every color's brown. Everyone ends up, really, yeah, brown. Covered in sand and paint. And I did remember to bring um soap and body wash for Nothing. the outdoor God. shower because we stood there the first time we played this and we're all covered in paint it's starting to dry and crack and we're like um this isn't good now what do we do yeah this isn't good and Somebody you don't want to get hose? in the ocean that's not cool you, no, you know definitely not. Elsewhere. so uh that's rascal feedy we got some other games we're playing this week we were playing a game we call dick stick yeah and uh <laughs> So we we just got in a box of suction cup dildos. There's literally a box of dicks. Which is hilarious because I see your name on this package and I totally forgot that you had this inspiration for this game and I'm, you know, working and trying to get organized for the trip. And I open a bag of dicks. A giant bag of dicks. They're big dicks. They're not even little dicks. So my hesitation is one. Did I order these? Are these my dicks? Who's whose dicks are these? I had to look at the label. I'm like, what if these belong to one of the children? Yeah. Well, the other thing that I have to remember is to take all of your dicks out of my luggage before I travel for work so I don't get I got, pulled I got, over by the TSA again. I got news for you. You're totally carrying my dicks in your bag. Awesome. That's happening. Her dicks are in my bag, folks. Uh, but then we got that game, and then we have Bootylicious. Yes. And we have Guitar Hero. Guitar so Hero is already This is going to be a really epic week for games. We're having a good time doing this. Um, but you know what? The last thing I think that uh, is transportation. Let's talk about, you know, what's <sighs> going on here, right? There's so many ways. Once you get into um, Montego Bay, Mm-hmm. Um, especially with going to hedonism, you can do um, the transport there, usually Sun Holiday. Yeah, and that's usually holidays. paid through like the group or the resort, however you It's the cheapest way to get from point A to point it B. It is, and, and it's a lot of fun. And, I, and there's many times that I miss it because you get to pre-meet a lot of the people you're going to be spending this week with. And it turns into kind of a party bus and a get-to-know-you bus. And you immediately have friends the second you walk onto the resort, which well, we is met always really cool. one of our best friends on the yes! bus. Yes! Yes. Uh, and, and we met that we didn't even know how no. close we were going to be. They were no. traveling with uh, pole pressure. Yes. And they came in with a different group and ended up being one of us. And they're amazing. They're yeah, amazing. They're awesome. And again, that's a perfect example of why I miss it so much. We take a private car. We do. Which is actually a bus. It's uh, Mr. Reasonable. They've been so good to us over the years. But with all the luggage and stuff that we bring on and down to the resort, we have to get you know, our own transportation, because there's no way that we would fit with us in our luggage. Oh, hell no. Uh, no on it's, a it's transfer no bus. Way. So. No, it's, there's just no way. And it's it's absolutely unbelievable yeah. how much crap we bring with us. And it, and Mr. Reasonable is is amazing. Yeah. Uh, Good I mean, people. Yeah, he's just 
ridiculous. Yeah. So my favorite though is, and I'm I'm not going to do it justice. Is Tim Error. Tim Error. <laughs> so Tim <laughs> Error is You're such a tour. <laughs> is a a small aircraft that takes you directly out of the airport. Uh, terminal once you get through customs and security grab your luggage and you take a hard right a small aircraft it's a fucking go-kart with it a prop. literally is like, it's, it literally it's tiny is. and i'm i'm terrified of heights I, I even don't do well on commercial flights but getting on this little plane i was scared shitless but it's some of the most beautiful views of jamaica i've ever seen oh yeah it, and it's, it's and it's, it's one to four people it's not the cheapest way but it is the fastest way because it's what a 20 minute ride you can fit as many as six in their big cessna depending on how much luggage you have and we okay. had a shitload of that. luggage and so we flew last time we flew tim air two tim years Air. ago tim Air. yeah uh so i was in the front seat with the pilot and so he hands me the controls and oh the ladies are in the back flipping shit because I was like, hey, it's Grand Theft Auto Jamaica edition. Pretty much. And the way Mickey plays Grand Theft Auto is he can't land to save his fucking life. Literally. No. It's always a crash landing. Yeah, so he has the controls. Gonna... I'm in the back seat going, terrible, terrible fucking plan. I was having a ball. Yeah. So naturally the pilot's like, well, what do you want me to do? And they're like, take the controls back. And I'm like, I think he needs to see some titties if we're going to, if we're going to, you know, give the controls back. So yeah, I was like, I will show you my anus if you <laughs> just Take the fucking controls back right now. <laughs> I was having a great time. I was going to fly to Kingston. Yeah. Even, yeah. It was it was really awesome. Not but how I so, so you do have some options when you come in there. And, you know, don't forget if you're a travel agent, it doesn't matter what travel agent you use, it doesn't matter who you go with, um, they're going to offer you Mobay. Yes. If you're coming in on a Saturday, Friday, take it. Saturday, Sunday. Take it. Take you're it. You're leaving on a Sunday or a Saturday. Take right. it. Yep. And those are really high traffic days for that airport. Yeah. And you can literally be in that line for hours. Yes. And, and it we've sucks. done it before. Right. And nothing worse than landing and going, fucking A, I'm yeah. here. I'm in Jamaica. Let's party and wait in a two and a half hour yeah. line at customs. Yes. And at early midweek, it's a 50 50. We always use it in the event that we need it there's some there's sometimes we've come in and we just walk right through with the rest of the people like, yeah there's well no and lines. when you're bringing in you know 200 casual swinger koozies and the custom agent says um you're going to sell these no i'm not i'm, I'm gonna give them away no no you're gonna sell them you're gonna give us a 150 dollar tariff on these yes it's like uh, so mobay actually is a little better for that too they they tend to be a little nicer if you have Mobay. yes so. correct uh and you know, so we're not breaking any laws we're giving the shit away but you know that doesn't mean they believe us. <laughs> That's true. That's true. So, yeah, let's talk about Howard for a minute, the ultimate ambassador. Oh, I love Howard so much. And when this airs, it's his birthday week. Yes, this is for his birthday. We saved this for his birthday. He's been asking us, guys, are you ever going to release my interview? Yeah, we are, Howard. We love you to death, man. And he has been going. Uh, it was 38 years when we recorded this interview, so it's 39 years now. Um, he's at Hito right now. He's been there for like four weeks. He goes six to eight weeks a year. He's going to talk about some blast from the past, what it used to be like, some of the old GMs, some of the old entertainment staff. If you are a longtime Hito veteran of any length, he's probably going to talk about somebody you know and love and remember. He did it to me. Yeah. He talked about Robert and his jerk chicken sauce. Yes. That I still have the recipe. You found it the other I day. I did. When we moved from Virginia to Florida, it was still pinned to your old office wall, and it's in my recipe One of my boxes. most prized possessions. That yeah. jerk chicken recipe is retonkulous. Yeah. But uh, I had so much fun having conversations with him, and I hope our listeners feel like they're there, you know, um, spending that time with us and with him. Uh, we could have talked for hours, hours and hours. I love his stories. I love his feedback. Well, yeah, we finished up with the interview in like half an hour, right? And we came back because Howard came and found us again because I just remembered more stuff. I, I get messages all the time that he's like, I'm ready for another one. I have more stories for you. And it's like, okay, uh, we'll figure this out. We'll make this a longer episode. It is it is what it is. I mean, our last episode was hugely long. We didn't mean it to be. Um, I just used a Trump word, huge. Uh, but, <laughs> oh you know, it's... I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I almost pressed the button. Oh, don't press the button. It's awful. Uh, but, you know... 
it's a testament to the this this resort is so impactful. It is, and people care this much and and go that long that Howard had all those stories to tell and came back to us and said, "I want to do this again." Uh, so happy birthday, Howard! You're listening to this episode right now. We're thinking of you today. We're going to be thinking of you next week. We're going to be thinking of you while we're at Hito. Uh, we're glad to be your friend, and uh, we think that what you do for the folks at Sandy Hook, what you do for the Super oh, yeah, Bowl the party, reunion. yeah, and he hosts uh, the the Super Bowl party at Hedonism every year. Yeah, yeah. This guy is an icon, and we call him the ultimate ambassador for Hedonism too. And we're not fucking around. This guy is everything, and he talks about some of the other things we're going to do. This is a three-part series. Mm-hmm. This three-part series is, uh, it's it's everything. And we this whole thing is called A Living History of Hedonism too. But this piece is about a guest, the mm-hmm. ultimate ambassador. The next piece we call The Winds of Change. And The Winds of Change is when everything changed at Hedo. Everything changed at Hedo, what, uh, a few just a few years ago mm-hmm. uh, when super clubs basically lost control of the resort. We're going to talk about that in the next episode with the guy that is widely credited and credited by he uh, by uh, Howard. Howard, thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, in this episode with saving hedonism too, his name mm-hmm. is John Gross. Mm-hmm. And then the last piece is the hedonist in chief. Yes, and we're interviewing him this week while we're at Hedo. So this is going to come out a little bit later. It's going to be the next episode in the series and the finale for a living history of hedonism too, and that is one Mister Harry Lang. So we're coming I for got you, goosebumps. Harry. I get goosebumps. It's also his birthday week. It's his birthday too, but we're coming for him. Yeah. I already told him we want to interview him while we're on site. And he said, yeah, I almost caught him while he was in Tokyo, but I'm glad we didn't because I get to see him while we talk to him. Yeah. Those are, those are two people I could literally sit down and talk with all day and all night. He likes to dance with you. So I love dancing with him too. (laughs) He's a ballroom dancer. He's classically trained. He really is. Like it's intimidating. I like to dance. I'm, I'm not a savant. Like I, I, I'm novice at best. Yeah, well, it's a good time. But hey, why don't you tell everybody where they can find us and let's let these folks hear from our friend, All right. Howard Herenstein. All right, guys. Well, while we're enjoying the Jamaican sun, please hit us up. Send us your feedback. Podcast at casualswinger.com. You can find us at casualswinger.com. Um, and we are Casual Swinger everywhere. That is Cassidy SLS SDC, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And don't forget to keep checking Twitter this week. So you can play What's Under My Hat with us. That'll do it, guys. Welcome, Howard Herenstein. This is A Living History of Hedonism 2, the ultimate ambassador. You've been listening to Casual Swinger. Uh, <clears throat> so we're here at Hedonism 2. We're at Casual Swinger. I'm Mickey. I'm Mallory. And we are here with Howard. Howard, we're not going to use your last name That's today. Fine. But uh, Howard, you are a longtime resident of Hedonism, too. Right? Very, very long time, yeah. I started coming in 1980 when it was Negril Beach Village. Wow, Negril Beach Village. So how long was it Negril Beach Village before they changed it to Hedonism, um, too? I think it started in 1975, and it changed over in 1981. Wow. But in 1980, when I first came, I swore I would never come back. Really? The Why food, is that? The food was horrendous. <laughs> to go to the beach, you had to walk way down past where the point is. You had to drag one of these heavy metal chairs with you. And to get a drink, you used to have to walk over to the Prude Bar. Wow. wow. Which is a long way. So uh, this resort is, uh, what, 90 acres or something? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. believe so. Somewhere in 90 acres. I mean, That's a heck prime, of a walk. It's prime, prime property. Yeah, it really the is. Point Village wasn't there at the time. It was all little coves. And so you drove the stuff over there, you sat in the cove for the day, and hoped you didn't have to pee or need a drink. <laughs> so when we used to go get drinks, we used to get drunk at the bar and walk back. <laughs> That's fantastic. So I know how we stumbled upon hedonism too, especially in this day and age with the internet. So how did you find out? Just going through travel brochures. I had a lot of friends that were travel agents. Okay. Pulled out a bunch of brochures, and I saw this crazy place, you know, that had nude sunbathing and... At the time, I think with airfare, it was about $1,500 a couple. So it was dirt cheap compared to today. So that was a good deal. I mean, this was 1980. Mm -hmm. Uh, We came back in 1981, but we went to couples in Ocho Rios. Mm -hmm. And it was so boring. The next day we left, came back here. Then we found out it was now hedonism, too. Wow. So the food was better. Uh, They cut down the beach so you didn't have to walk so far to the beach. And uh, they put in a little hut with some booze in there so you didn't have to walk as far. 
that, well that's a huge victory. This was built. Really? Yeah. There so, was no pool there. There was no. The only thing there was woods, and then eventually they built the hot tub. And after that, they started building more and more structures for uh, bars. This was Delroy's first bar here. Delroy, okay. I yeah. miss Delroy and Scumba. Yeah. And then they put yeah, uh, this Scumba. little area here on the end was a grill. Wow. So Robert was the first grill master there. I miss Robert, too. Yeah. Robert was the guy that uh, I, I just posted a picture of him on, yeah. on my site. So he would tell me when we first started talking about coming here, one of the first things he mentioned was Robert's recipe for jerk chicken sauce. Yeah. Like the jerk sauce he would make. Which was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's better than it is today. I mean, oh, it's... It was a little yeah. different then. I mean, we used to buy lobster. He used to cook it over there. But then they found out so many people had shellfish allergies that he couldn't <laughs> do it anymore. Fair enough. Because they used wow. the same grill. Fair enough. So when, you know, a lot of people, we talk about Hita, we talk about people being naked. We talk about swinging and lifestyle. Obviously, our podcast is a lifestyle-oriented podcast. But hedonism isn't about that no no it's no. it's about the freedom to be yourself it's well, about the people you meet but what's it about for you and what brought it well what originally in the old days it was like being a voyeur <laughs> you know you came here the swinging wasn't quite as obvious as it is today you know the mm-hmm. public display of affection wasn't as uh, crazy as it is now i mean a guy walked down the beach with a heart on and everybody looked at him and laughed <laughs> uh, so it was a big difference most of the stuff was just in the rooms and I guess when it was in the Grill Beach Village they used to post the different types of sex in different rooms up near the dining room so the whole thing changed and they brought in Sam James to calm things down a little bit he was he was the second manager here Mm -hmm. Tony Ferraro who was an owner was the first manager and Sam was brought in to tone things down a little bit and he did but things (laughs) were always behind closed doors every now and then you walk by a room and they had the door open and come on in yeah but uh that's yeah. a good rule. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, no, I'm not into the lifestyles. I'm yeah. just into my friends here. And, you know, occasionally if somebody jumps on me, you know, I don't complain. <laughs> <laughs> so you're lifestyle friendly and just comfortable yeah, in this I mean, atmosphere. Yeah, all my friends, you know, like yeah. Sherry and Derek, you know, they're my buddies. Yeah. Uh, a lot I've of known, great people here. Yeah, I've known, um, <laughs> I'm having trouble remembering. I've known a lot of these people for a lot of years, and they, they've changed, and I got older, and I didn't change. <laughs> so, but, you know, the, the truth is that no matter how straight you are when you get here, after a few trips, you start trying a little bit more, and a little bit more, and a little bit more. And I just did a survey. I don't know if you saw the survey. I did. I did. Um, uh, on Joe's site, yes. uh, it came out that 40% of the people that come here were swingers. Wow. Now, I don't know if they were full swap swingers or just, you know, playful. But I did a site on my own, and it came out to about 24%. And I think 24% is a lot more accurate. I think I have to agree. If you had to take, like, a a running poll of everyone who's on this beach today, that's probably pretty close. Yeah. You'll find a lot of people here that are into this touchy-feely, kissy, you know, stuff. Sure. Mm -hmm. But as far as full swap goes... Nah, yeah, very few people in the, the game. I mean, you got to really trust your companion to do stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Well, that's a lot closer to the national average, which is around 20%. Is it? Yeah, so that's uh, that's a lot closer to that and probably a lot closer to reality. So when we talk about our, our podcast is called Casual Swinger. And it's, it means that you're not, you know, we don't, this isn't our life. We have children and friends and, and things that we do. Yes. And we come here. I, I, I'm going to take a guess for the same reason you do for the friends, the people. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, we come here for the experiences and a lot of your group are friends of mine. Yeah. It's kind of you know, cool. And yeah. Rachel, I've known for years and She's I love wonderful. Rachel. And yeah. I Who love, doesn't? Yeah. in fact, Sherry and I got friendly online. Yeah. You know, I thought she was beautiful. Mm-hmm. So I friended her. She friended me and we became very close on the She's internet. Such a sweetheart. And when we finally met, it was, it was great. And yeah. when I got hurt here, she, Checked on me every single day, make sure I was That's okay. Sure. Yeah. And um, so finally, I met Derek, and he said to me, "Of all the guys that talk to Sherry, you're the only one I trust." <laughs> <laughs> That's so, a fair statement. I don't know if that was a compliment or a blow, but, <laughs> but uh, I love you, it. you make a lot of friends that way because you keep in touch, mm-hmm. and that's why people come back the same week every year yeah. because they know they're gonna. You know, I've seen you here for years, yeah. and I never really got to know you. 
But when he did that painting and portrait thing, man, I was in love. I thought that was the greatest. In fact, I'm glad we could when you do you it this fun. time, I'm right there. You got it, man. You got it. We're actually we're uh, we're going to do some really fun stuff this yeah. week. So I hope you do get to participate with yeah. us because the the concept of the hotel has changed a lot. Because a lot of the stuff the hotel I always felt the hotel was supposed to do, the groups have come in and done it. And obviously, John was the first one to change the whole. Uh, concept of the mm-hmm. place. Yeah. He'd come in and he'd, he'd give the lobster to his people and he'd have the cock and tail party and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but what's happened is other groups have come in, the Dirty Pervs, Rachel's Rascals, mm-hmm. Topless Travel. There's nobody finer, no offense taken, but there's nobody finer than Mark and Carly. Yeah. We, we <laughs> love those guys. They we host like them a, lot. a lot of parties I, I mean, near us. They're yeah. from, they should come to work for the hotel here. Yeah. yeah, they're because, friends of ours. We like yeah. them. Yeah, they're they're and we, phenomenal. And, you know, they come to Orlando a lot. Yeah, secrets, I know they do. Yeah. So we get to see them regularly. Yes. Yeah, and uh, and they, you know, one of my favorite things about Mark and Carly is that they're friendly to everybody, and and not just because it's their business, because they're actually nice people. Right. Yes. Uh, right. So they it helps business care. too because you draw people into you. Yeah. Certainly, you, you develop your own little group. Yeah. But they're, they're, and, and Mark is crazier and convenient. And, and Carly's smoking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, it, it doesn't but, hurt. But these are the things I always felt the hotel should be doing. And they tried with their entertainment staff. But as time progressed, the entertainment staff went from being big entertainment to more entertaining up on the stage. I mean, these people are really nice and they're really talented. But, you know, compared to what they used to do, it's a lot different. Yeah, I, I've I, I seen see that, that dynamic too. change over yeah. the last ten years. Since they used to have big personalities here. They had this yeah. guy, Buddy Man. I don't know how far back you go, but if you look on my site today, there's a picture of some of the original people, like Buddy Man and Harold. Cornell was unbelievable. One of the nicest people you ever want to meet. Uh, Cheryl was in charge of all the uh, entertainment, and it was just a different concept. They weren't as talented, but they were more people oriented. Gotcha. You know. These kids are good, but I think good because it's part of their job. Right. They're yes. really entertainers. Well, and they're yes. yet dancers and singers and yeah. athletes. Yeah. Yes. Winston's doing a phenomenal job. He really is. Entertainment. And he's a very talented man. Yeah, he oh, is. Winston's amazing. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's, I don't, it's beyond reproach, I'd say. Yeah. You see those fancy dresses they wore last night? Oh, yeah. yeah they were After gorgeous. you turn this off, I'll tell you how much each one costs. Mm. <laughs> Absolutely. Harry wouldn't be real happy with <laughs> Well, it. so tell me something, uh, and if you can if you can think of it, because I mean, if some of this has probably come out in the course of our conversation. If you could tell me two things that over your years, because you've been coming since 1980, so I mean, what are we talking about? 28 years now? Uh, yeah. 30. 38, 38 years. Yeah. Jesus, my math is bad. I've been yes. in the head a few times. Started when I was 10. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. So, uh, but two things that have stayed the same, and two things that are the most different. So two things that, you know, just are still Hedo, have always been Hedo, or Hedo to the core, and maybe two things that are just different. Well, the thing the that trip. stayed the same is the fact when you get off the bus, it's a different type of freedom. You know, anything you wanted to do in the past, it's an adult playland. Yeah. That's what it amounts to. You can play games, you can meet people, have sex with them, and it's a, it's a playland. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the guy that sits at home and wants to have a threesome with his wife, mm-hmm. you know, well, you can come here, it could happen. Right. You know, less at home because you have kids and you have jobs and stuff. Yeah. Uh, that's the thing that stayed the same. The yeah. thing that's different, I don't know. I don't think many things have changed. I think it's just the amount of sex became more apparent and more intensity than it ever was. So did we change as, as people, as a culture, or did the resort change? I think the resort changed their philosophy. Yeah. Because the new owner is... This is his philosophy. Yeah. You know, he loves it. He wants everybody to have a good time. Mm -hmm. And he wants to have a good time. Really much. If if I had one word to describe him, it would be compersive. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, that's a beautiful word to describe Harry. And uh, so we were actually fortunate enough, last time we were here, and we didn't get to interview her here, so we're going to do it remotely, but Chris Santilli was here. Right. Yes. And we love her to pieces. We felt and so honored to well, meet I've her known, in person. Well, I've known Chris for 30-some-odd years. Yeah. Uh, well, you know. reading her book is what actually made me feel comfortable and gave me the inspiration to, to come to I'm him in her go, second I need book. to go. We're well, in the third. We're in the third. Are you? I yeah. The third, yeah. <laughs> it's not out it's yet. Not out. No, I know. Yeah. yeah. That's why she's haunting me for pictures. <laughs> <laughs> but I was in the pool one day, and I saw this girl that I just loved. Yeah? I loved. So this other woman came in and started having oral sex with her on the side of the pool. So I went up to the woman and asked her if she'd kiss me. 
She said, yes, so she laid a kiss on me. And I said, man, I just ate that woman by proxy. <laughs> <laughs> Chris put it in the book. There you go. Second generation Eden right there. Yeah. That's fantastic. I always had a fantasy every time I came here. Yeah? Yeah. I always had one fantasy that I just registered on the whole week. I, Pursuit? Yeah. Yeah. How'd it work out? Well, I never did anything with them. But I had <laughs> so, is I mean, in your in your mind, your bucket list items for coming to Hito? Because when you've been coming as long as you've been coming here, there's probably things you've always wanted to do. And I've met people. I met a woman here. One of my favorite stories is a Scottish woman that was here that always wanted to sing. And oh, and that played the accordion. Oh yeah, I and remember her. She had never sang in front of people in her life ever. And she did, and she had a crowd of 150 people around her. She was her good, right? She was amazing. She's like, I think about her to this day, and I get goosebumps. So she just let loose and finally did it, and then had the time of Well, that was one of my fantasies, too, to sing down here. Yeah? So they let me sing, and I cleaned out the piano bar. <laughs> <laughs> and I still do it. They have me sing just before it's time to close. <laughs> it's time to go. Howard? I always wanted to do water sports, but I was always too lazy to do it. Yeah. I it's actually, hard. I actually started playing tennis coming here. Yeah. Right. And that's something I wanted to do um, I don't know you know I don't enjoy sitting in the hot sun all the time mm -hmm. but I enjoy talking to people I like moving around and talking and people wondering where I was all day yeah you know? <laughs> what the hell did he so, get into I have no expectations when I come here I think that's one of the worst things you can do come here with expectations sure yeah. That's the only you know, way you're guaranteed to be disappointed eventually, yeah, right? Yeah, of course. At first, I had a lot of expectations. I was going to do this, do that. Mm -hmm. You know, I was going to have a crazy sex life. <laughs> well, after being disappointed for 10 years, I decided to forget <laughs> it. Forget it. Uh, my grandmother used to say, expect nothing, appreciate everything. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. So, do you have any regrets after 38 years at Hito? Yeah, I didn't do enough traveling. That's yeah. the only regret I have. I did some when my kids were growing up, but actually next year I'm going to start traveling. I'm retired now. I've been retired for about five months. and uh, Congratulations. Thanks. Yeah, amazing. After 40 years of working. So I decided I was going to, I'm going to Israel in April, and I'm going to do a little more traveling. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the only thing I regret. But I don't regret coming here. I mean, it's been fun. Yeah. It's just that as you come more and more and you, you get older and older, you're just not able to participate in things quite as much. And that's a disappointment, but I'm still here. <laughs> still, I'm still here. I love yeah. it. Absolutely love it. So there's one other noteworthy thing, right? Well, I mean, there's a lot of noteworthy things about you. But you don't just come here often. You don't just come here for a long time. When you, when you come, you stay a long time. Yeah. Well, so, I use it as a snowboard. Yeah. <laughs> you know, instead of going to Florida, I come here. Uh, if you sit down and really figure it out, you're probably paying a little bit more coming here than you would. Because you got to eat out, eat out all the time in Florida. Yes. you got to bring food in. And here, everything is good. I do a lot of stuff for the hotel, too. You know, I run a reunion in New Jersey for them. Yeah. And it's uh, awesome. I also uh, run the Super Bowl party for them. So I do a lot of stuff here. So it's not like I'm just here to... Uh, socialize you know mm -hmm. I, I enjoy doing stuff for Harry you know, that's fantastic Harry's a pretty cool guy yeah how long do you stay when you come down we're here for a month this time usually three to four weeks wow actually we're going to try to do something the month of uh, January I'm always here February it's my birthday mm -hmm. so we're going to try to actually come down here in January well we'll probably see you in February then yeah, yeah. I'll be here that's crazy yeah, so my birthday's the 26th and wow. Harry's the 25th and we celebrate together. That's, That's awesome. That's perfect. We'll be here. Yeah, we will yeah, we be here. We'll be here for your birthday this year. Who do you book through when you book? Uh, direct. You yeah. just book direct? Yeah. Yeah, because I've done it for so long, they still will take care of me. That's fantastic. <clears throat> yeah, I don't have to worry about be. coming in on a Wednesday or Thursday or Friday. Does that yeah. mean you get to be friends with everybody because you don't book with one particular tour operator? <laughs> yeah. 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 One of the things with even my, my reunion, uh, Kevin won't let me bring a travel agent in. I can't take any money from them. I can't associate with them with the reunion. Fair enough. So it's all supported by the hotel. The first year I brought the reunion back, I had Go Classy work with me, and they donated money to me. And then after that, the hotel took it over. Reunion was pretty expensive because we was gonna planned say a pretty good weekend. So maybe someday you'll come. That would be super cool. Yeah. We uh, we I mean, well... Where do you live? We live in Orlando. Oh, it's way. But we far. travel for a living, so we do, we, we do yeah. get around a fair bit, even to Jersey. Yeah. It's a nice beach, too. It's a nude beach. 
except the walk from the parking lot to the beach is pretty long. <laughs> Probably don't want to do that naked, right? N no, you can't do it naked. It's a federal park, so <laughs> you'd end up in jail naked. Oh. That's but we, we always have a lot of people, and we have a big party, too. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm thinking of more things that I, are different here, but there's really not a lot different. The difference is that they've upgraded the place. They've made it a lot nicer. Yeah. When I first came it's here, beautiful. you'd walk into a room that was all mildew. You had a chest of drawers, a divider, then a bed, and then a window, and that was it. I mean, the bathroom was terrible. And on the top drawer of the uh, chest of drawers was a Gideon Bible and a candle. <laughs> because you never had electricity for a full 24 hours. And you needed the Bible. Uh, yeah, to put under the girl's butt. <laughs> mm. oh, that's that's too cool. Yeah, but uh, then they upgraded it. I'm trying to remember who the GM was. But Sam James was the first manager under Hedonism 2. Then Gary Williams. I don't know if you knew Gary Williams. Nope. He came. And then it was Kevin Levy, then Richard Burke, then mm -hmm. Kevin Levy. You know, Kevin was sent over to Ocho Rios for Hito 3. And that was kind of a mistake because they took uh, they took the same concept and divided it in half. And it ended up, this place was pretty empty. Really? Oh, yeah. For years, it was very, very empty. You know, maybe they'd have 80% at the max. Why do you think that Hito 2 survived and Hito 3 didn't? Um... I don't know. Probably yeah. familiarity. Yeah, that's a good you know, question. It was a younger crowd at Hedo 3. Mm -hmm. Much younger crowd. And a much smaller resort. Much smaller resort. Mm -hmm. And so. I, I really don't know. You know, I've never asked Kevin about it. Yeah. I've, I've heard a lot of things. That's why I was just interested in the conjecture. What did you hear? Uh, that the beach was non-existent was at Hedo no 3. Beach. There was no beach. Yeah, definitely no beach. Uh, that the water was rougher because it's a different side of the island. You're right. Um, and it was colder in the winter. Mm -hmm. But yeah. there was more to do directly around the resort because it was closer to things. Being yeah, how many really times have you left this resort to do things? Other twice. Than twice. <laughs> twice in 10 years. And every time we do, we regret it. We go, why the hell did we leave? The party yeah. was back there. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and that's definitely the case. So, I go out to eat once for lunch and once for for dinner. Yeah, that's we it. do a dinner run. Yeah. Yeah, one uh, night. That's all I do because yeah. every, everything's right here. There's nothing better. And then you go out and they, they treat you to a uh, different fee structure. Yes. <laughs> you know. Very true. Everything's very much more expensive. Yeah, it really is. And it's generally not worth it. I mean, you know, who needs to go on a hill and get a piece of lobster and well, there's a guy that will bring it to you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Fireman's Lobster yeah. is arguably better than anything you can get out there. Very good. Yes. I would I would argue <coughs> anyway. So Fireman's a guy that walks I, down through here. Generally speaking, I haven't been off that much. No. You know, I've been here with my kids once. My kids actually stayed here. They stayed in the no manager's kidding. cottage. That's awesome. Yeah, because I was really good friends with Sam James. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they stayed here. His kids were the same age as mine. So... We used to stay there, and uh, I'd stay in the hotel, and the kids would stay there. And um, trying to think, Gary Williams probably did more for the hotel than anybody else. Yeah. He really got this place upgraded. So, do you think the upgrades are, are what helped it grow? I mean, because, I mean, obviously no. when Hedo 3 was in, in business, you said that it was down. Um, Hito's always enjoyed the highest repeat there was, business. There was no upgrades here. Yeah. <laughs> there was nothing. This I'm, place went to hell. Super clubs ran it into the ground. In the two, early 2000s when I was coming, it was terrible. This was their cash cow. Yeah? This is where they made all their money to do the other resorts. Yeah. Uh, this place was always bringing in bucks. Yeah. And they used the money here. They didn't upgrade this place. And uh, I remember one anniversary here. I think it was the 10th anniversary. It was the poorest thing you ever want to see. It was awful. Gary Williams had just left being general manager, and uh, he left because he was embarrassed by what they were doing for the anniversary. Really? Uh, because two weeks later, they had travel agents coming in at a big party, and they saved all the money for the travel agents. So it was kind of silly. That did, Yeah, that doesn't make sense. So mismanagement nearly sank the resort. Yeah, and they didn't care. I mean, they wanted out. And, and they kept selling stuff until they got their money back. John and Harry and company came in and yeah, scooped it up. Actually, John is responsible for setting the whole thing up. Is he? Yeah. And uh, Harry finally went with it. Now Harry's 100% owner here. Mm -hmm. yeah. He owns the whole thing. So he's um, he tries to participate, 
But he gets sidetracked. <laughs> by, by beautiful women and fun yeah. things to do. Kevin's the general manager. Donna's a hotel manager who's phenomenal. I love yeah, Donna. Love Donna, Donna Grant is amazing. And Harry's sister-in-law, Diane, does those, all the renovations and stuff. And she kind of keeps her eye on everything. Yeah. Plus, keeps her eye on Harry, too. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. 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 You might need it. There's been a few 5 a.m. walk, you know, we see him walking back to his room. It's oh, like, yeah. Yeah, it's not unusual. His daughter was here two weeks ago. Wow. And uh, it's quite a character. I mean, she's in med- she's a residency in her uh, emergency care medicine. Mm-hmm. Very bright. I mean, the whole family is just very, very bright. So, uh, you know, for anybody that, that is hanging in here with us, this is a living history of hedonism, too, with our friend Howard. And uh, what I'd encourage, I guess, any of you to do is to check this out because it has changed so much. But if you could tell anybody, because a lot of our listeners actually go to Desire. Like oh, I, I can tell them about it right now. Number one, the food here probably isn't as gourmet as Desire, mm-hmm. but it's adequate on a day-to-day basis. There's nothing bad here. And no, you can what eat what you want. You can eat in the restaurant you want. It's phenomenal. Number two, there's more activity here. From what I understand, Desire kind of closes up at night. Mm-hmm. And here, the activity doesn't start till dinner time. <laughs> right? I mean, it, yeah. it, it's all day, but it really gets wild at night. Uh, it's, it's just the whole atmosphere here is a lot different. It's not as upgraded, but it's fun. Mm-hmm. It's fun, and you can have fun 24 hours a day. I, I have never been to Desire, but I've had a lot of feedback from my friends, and my friends that went to Desire are coming back here. Those that wanted the fine food, and wanted an upgrade in attitude and stuff, they still go to Desire, but not many. Wow. You know, it's just not, um, it's not hedonism, that's all. They tried, but it's not working. There's no place like home. No. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can, let's face it, you can do what you want on the beach here, and nobody will even turn ahead. But from what I understand, Desire, during the day, they're pretty uh, regimented. You don't have to do so much. Right. You know, and it has to be off to the side. Oh, uh, there's nothing off to the side here at Hedo. Well... Howard, thank you very much for taking the time to sit sure. with us a little bit yes, today and tell us about it. some of your experiences. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Anytime. Is, yeah. you, As I think, maybe I'll have more. Uh, I, I hope so, it. too. But uh, I'm Mickey. I'm Mallory. And this is Casual Swinger, and we're on the beach at Hedonism 2 with our friend Howard. Thanks for joining us. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Casual Swinger. I'm Mickey. I'm Mallory. And we have Howard here with us where we're continuing our conversation of a living history of hedonism too. So we thought we would sit back down with Howard and talk a little bit more about some of the things that he's learned over the course of his 38 years of trips to hedonism too. And uh, hear a few more stories from him. We're going to let Mallory take the lead because uh, I lost my voice this week. So (laughs) I sound a little bit like Sandra Bernhardt or a frog or God knows what. So we're going to let these guys chat a little bit and uh, tell you a little bit more about some of the things that Howard has learned along the way. That's right. So you came to us and said you uh, thought of a few more things you wanted to discuss about the history of hedonism here. Yeah, actually, uh, when I saw the party that they had last Wednesday, I started thinking about some of the parties in the past. And I've been through a lot of anniversaries here, and the 10th anniversary here was kind of wild. It reminded me of the party the other night where we had Byron Lee's group Mm -hmm. here. Uh We had a big Mardi Gras party. We had people skydiving and all kinds of good things happening. Um, Since that time, things kind of quieted down. And uh, until last Wednesday, things went crazy again. Yeah. yeah, so tell us from your perspective what happened here last Wednesday. We're going to talk about it to our listeners. Well, obviously but. it was a, a marketing idea on the part of uh, hedonism. And what they did is they uh, offered a one-day excursion to hedonism from the Bliss Cruise. And hedonism set up and put up decorations, hired extra help, brought in extra food. Obviously brought in extra extra booze, because as you know, on a cruise, <laughs> yeah. you have to pay for booze. Yes. At Hedonism, it's all-inclusive, so you don't pay for it. That's true. Uh, the party was tremendous. It was probably a $100,000 party, if I would say it's $5, you know, if it was a cent. Yeah. It was a big-time party. Oh, it was enormous. Yeah. They and had was, setups all over the property. It was yeah. amazing. They brought in 600 people. And on the way here, they had a little accident, it slowed things down. I didn't hear about that. Oh, yeah, they had a little motorcycle accident, but I won't go into it. It wasn't, yeah. it's kind of gory. But, oh, uh, no. That's yeah, terrible. That's terrible. Yeah. But uh, they got here, things started off great, 
it started raining a little bit. That's kind right. of ruined things, <laughs> and then it rained again. But by the end of the day, it was fabulous. The entertainment was great. Food was great. It was fun. And the best part of it was trying to get everybody back into the bus to go back to the cruise because <laughs> about 99% of them were drunk. <laughs> so well, they, and I'm sure they didn't want to get back on the boat. It looked like everyone was having such a good time. Uh, they had a ball here. It was really, really a great idea. And, in fact, I spoke to Harry. You know, he's on the cruise now, and he said mm -hmm. his feedback from the cruise was phenomenal, which is good because it'll bring more, more people back into hedonism. Yeah. Because as we... I mentioned before, it's really not a swinger's paradise. It's swinger friendly, mm -hmm. but uh, anybody's welcome here. Whether you're a nudist, whether you don't like being nude, whether you don't like being a swinger, it's open to everybody, and it's a lot of fun mm -hmm. because people will find out whether you're a nudist or a swinger. Mm -hmm. They're good people, and they're good to hang around with. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like it's a right your own adventure story, right? Yeah. It's whatever you want it to be. Right, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You can come and just do nothing for uh, 10 days or 7 Absolutely. days. Absolutely. Or you can have a ball. Well, so one of my favorite things about your perspectives on this resort is that, you know, you're not paid to be an ambassador for hedonism. You're a customer. You pay to come here. Yet, it's obvious to me that you're passionate about what this place means to you and that its longevity matters to you. Yeah, because I, you know, I had a pretty heavy-duty job when I was working. And I needed a place where I can come and just unwind. And this was always the place. And when you get here, it's like you're home. And uh, you relax immediately. It's not like going on a cruise and have to get used to stuff or going to a new area where you have to get used to live, uh, staying in a different area for a few days. It, you're right at home right away. And obviously, after all these years, I have an awful lot of friends here. Uh, yeah, that's true. Pretty much everyone knows who you are. Yeah. yeah. I feel like a Whether that's good you or bad, are. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, they do. <laughs> that's fantastic. So, my, friend, my friend tells me that I have no friends left here. So. <laughs> that's that right? awesome. <laughs> so looking at what happened this week versus with some of the things that happened in the past, you mentioned 10th anniversary, which was 27 years ago, uh, right? Because we're 37th anniversary of hedonism. Uh, what do you think has changed the most between a party that was a big deal then to today? To today? Well, the philosophy of hedonism was always the same, but the money put into the hotel was a lot different. Okay. You know, as time progressed, they used hedonism as a cow, cash cow for them. They built up other hotels as a result of it. They had Hedo 3, they had Brocco, mm -hmm. uh, they had places to run away bay. It just made a big difference, and uh, they and weren't putting all the bucks into Hedo, and the place got pretty run down. Uh, and that was the Super Clubs regime, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, it was Super Clubs, and they uh, used it just to pay for everything else. And you can see the food went bad again after a while. Yeah. I've been here when they had no tablecloths, they've had no napkins, <laughs> they had to use paper napkins. Uh, things was, have changed a lot. And oh, yeah. When Harry took over, Harry was a guest here, and he knew what this place was all about. He knew what it needed, and he was willing to put up the bucks. Yeah. And he did it, and he's... You know, he's pretty happy. He's probably his own best customer. <laughs> you know, he loves the place. He really, truly does. I was impressed that he went on the Bliss Cruise with everybody. Yeah. Yeah. You know, one of my favorite things about Harry is that he's so approachable. Yes. Uh, and there, now, a lot of CEOs of a resort, are, they don't they don't commiserate with their people. They don't sit and speak with them and talk to them. They don't take their feedback earnestly like, like Harry does. Yeah. Harry listens. uh Harry's involvement with the hotel isn't as in-depth as everybody thinks it is. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he listens, he shares his ideas, but he has family members that work here, and Kevin Levy obviously is the GM right. who basically runs things. Mm -hmm. But Harry does listen. Uh, does he always follow through? That I don't know. But, <laughs> but, uh, well, you can't do everything, right? No. Because not yeah. every idea is a good idea. No, he wants his place to be wild. Yeah. This is what he likes about it. He yeah. likes the excitement. He likes uh, the wildness. Uh, he's obviously a people person. Well, did Fair. you catch our party yesterday, speaking of wild? No, actually I didn't because I've had trouble for the last couple days. Oh, I'm really sorry you missed it. Was it good? It was, it was very good. good. We played a game called Guitar Hero. Um, and it's basically a spin on air guitar, except everyone was using their cocks as their uh, air guitar. So 
It was hilarious. It's we one we of the had eight guys play in their dicks. I won't miss the next yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> play in their dicks to uh, Sweet Child of Mine and uh, Walk This Way. And, and, and they went at it 110. percent We also had them dressed up in feather boas. Yeah, Harry would have liked and, that. And oh yeah, it was yeah. it was. He's a actually theme. coming back today. Is he? That's yeah. great news. He'll be back yeah. tonight and send a couple of days. He never stays very long. But his brother loves air guitar, so he, <laughs> he missed it too. You know, it's 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 tremendous, and and one of our favorite things to do, much like you, is to see the the folks around us having a good time. You know, we're customers of hedonism. Yeah, we don't get paid to come here. Right. Uh, this is something that we do because we love it, much like you do, and it's one of the reasons it's so important for us to sit down with somebody that isn't paid to be an ambassador. They do it out of passion. Passion's a big part of what we do and probably why we do the show in the first place. This is probably one of the reasons why some of these groups started, too. Yeah. Uh, I remember back when the Fluffer Nuggets first started, John was just overwhelmed by the whole thought of, wow, open sex can do what he wants. He was just <laughs> overwhelmed with it. And, I think he still is. I was part of his original 12 people that came here. Really? And, uh, yeah, as time progressed, he got bigger and bigger and bigger, and John had some great ideas. But now, obviously, he has a lot of competition. Uh, things have changed. they got some major travel operators that come here now, like yep. uh, Tom's yep. Tours is here. Castaways. Topless Travel, Castaways. Dream. Yeah. Go Classy. But then the, uh, the fact that Rachel really got into it, Rachel's Rascals. Yes. I love Rachel, as you know. Yeah, she's one of my favorite people. Yeah. Nikki, you're my favorite now, too. <laughs> but, oh, thank you. But Rachel is probably one of the friendliest people I've ever met in my life. And she's just really sincere and she's real. And That's why they're friends of ours. Yes. Yeah. Well, you can see with her group because yesterday two catamarans went out the other day. One of them was full of rascals and the other one was kind of empty. <laughs> yeah, there were 83 of us on that boat. Yeah. And so you can see how much yeah. love she really uh It is. Progresses. It was, and that was great energy. The best catamaran cruise we've ever been on. That's and good. that was the consensus. I missed that one, too. Yeah. We did some ignorant shit on that boat, too. Right? Because keep in mind, we're the hosts for that group. Yeah. So we do it, some really How did you get stuff. involved with hosting? Uh, you know, it kind of goes back to we were friends with Jim and Rachel, and we had so much fun just hanging out. And, you know, Jim asked me, you know, how, you know, what's with you? Like, why are, why are you so outgoing and, and gregarious? And, and obviously the things you say, I never know what's going to come out of your mouth next. And I said, this is kind of what I do. You know, I, I entertain and I educate. That's my job in the real world, guys. And, uh, and I said, you know, I could probably help you grow your group if you, you know, let me emcee a pool party for you. And uh, he said, well, sure, we'll give it a shot. And uh, the next time we did it and our group exploded. Uh, because it turns out people want that energy, they want the passion, they want the feeling, they and, do. and I can't do any of that stuff without that girl right there. That girl oh. right there, uh, she's my eyes, she's my ears, she's my conscience. So she lets me say and do some of the dumbest things that any man has ever said and done. <laughs> and it, it's a lot of fun, though, because sometimes I get to be Vanna White, and sometimes I'm an air traffic controller. <laughs> um, yeah. The, yeah, that's uh, a good time. You talk about being committed to the hotel. Well, I used to go to Hito Reunion. New Jersey every year. Yeah, we met a couple that does that too yeah. yesterday. And uh, what happened is after a few years, I realized that it's not all together. You need more. Yeah. So what I did is I started running the uh, party mm-hmm. on Saturday night at the mm-hmm. reunion. And now I guess I'm the honorary head of the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I've been running, uh, we've been running the party, Diane and I, for about five years now. Five years? Four years? This will be the fifth year. Okay. And we came from having 100 people there to a massive crowd now. We've had up to 600 people on the beach. And the party, we can't handle more than 150, but it's a big-time party. That's fantastic. And, and then I also run the Super Bowl party here <laughs> in February. So, well, I think we know. talked about trying to join you after we, we did our first segment of this interview. Uh, we talked about trying to join you guys for a uh, heater reunion in yeah. New Jersey. Oh, that would be fun. Yeah. Check it out and spend some time with yeah. you. Yeah. Well, we're together on Facebook now, so we can yes. stay in touch. Absolutely. But first couple of years, now what happens is, uh, what's happening now is we get all the groups that come, and they're all represented. Uh, I haven't gotten Rachel and Jim there yet, but I will. Because they, we'll just, they just moved this year. That's but true. Uh, we have a lot of groups. The Bubbly Bears used to participate big time but as that group got older and older the group got thinner and thinner mm-hmm. so uh, we we have support of the hotel now which makes it really nice Good. you know that's an interesting perspective as well do you think as the years have gone on 
certain groups that age has affected them and as as do the groups change right when people get older do the groups thin out because people get older yeah or the bubbly you... bears was like the third third group here first group was the uh outrageous group and the turtles and the bubbly bears bubbly bears was well over 150 people wow but now if we get 70 people it's a lot and, you know i've been coming for 38 years so you see yeah. a lot of people come and they really go because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we've lost a lot of members yeah that's, as that time progresses true. but what's happened is they're not groups like they used to be they're travel groups now you don't get a group that oh i take that back the pin pals are a group that uh they tell them when they're coming, and they make their own reservations. So it's not like you book it as a group. Most of it's travel groups now. Yeah. But when groups have people like you, it makes it more exciting. Yeah. Because some of the groups have nobody up that runs things, and they're very, very boring. Oh. So, you know, the the, the best people here are you two, uh, Mark Mays. Yes. And obviously Carly and Mark, who are yes. lunatics. Yeah, we love those guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, I think but we said great that. At what they do? Yeah, last segment we we love those guys, Carly and Mark. If you're listening, we fucking love you. So, yeah. Uh, but so tell us, how do you stay relevant? At 38 years, hedonism is still relevant. Hedonism is a ubiquitous word. It still shows up in Cosmopolitan. It shows up in Playboy. It shows up in in mainstream media. Mm-hmm. Hedonism is is synonymous with excitement and lifestyle and nudity and sex and swinging and freedom. Um, Truthfully, yeah, it's passed me by. Yeah. It really has. It really has because the things that were really exciting to me at one time. They're not so exciting anymore. You know, I've been there and done that. So it really passed me by in years. But I still come because it's relaxing. Mm -hmm. I have friends here, and I like to watch people have a good time. But do I participate in everything? Not anymore. You know, I used to do Olympics on the beach, goat racing, and all that stuff. (laughs) You know, now the goats run a lot faster than (laughs) they And uh, I told, I always told Diane that if a woman's willing to have sex with me, She's willing to have sex with anybody, <laughs> especially at my age. Is that the Groucho Marx thing? You know, I won't be a part of any club that would have me as a, member. as a member. Yeah. Right, <laughs> right. But it's you know, it's it's kind of true because we've talked about it and we just we've seen it just pass us by. Mm-hmm. But we become very good friends uh, with Harry's brother and sister-in-law. So we come and we spend a week with them. Uh, we have other friends with the Bubbly Bears. We spend time with. So we do a lot more talking than we do anything else. Mm-hmm. But it's socializing and it's fun. That's that is fun. that is one of the highlights for yeah. me, is the socializing and meeting new people, and seeing old friends. And doing the up. reunion and doing the Super Bowl. And I have, excuse me, two sites on Facebook that I mm-hmm. fool around with. I feel like I'm still connected to the hotel. Oh, I, I'd say you very much are. I'd, I'd say you're closer to the nucleus than maybe you uh, would admit. You know, And I don't, I don't think being self... Uh, you know, self-deprecating is a bad thing. I do it for a living. <laughs> so uh, I you think anybody... Fix the Wi-Fi, then you'll make me real happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to see That's what I can do. That's the only problem with this place. The Wi-Fi sucks. Yeah. Well, everything uh, else is perfect. Uh, in, in defense of my company, I'll say the Wi-Fi is perfect. It's everything behind it that sucks. <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> but, but, you know, that's, that's the Jamaican way, though. If you expect things to be done quickly here... Forget it, because yeah, quickly have, could be two or three days. Soon come, Mom. Yeah, yeah. soon come. It's a re- there's a reason they call it Jamaica time. Yeah. yeah, but this is one of the things that they're trying to change here, yeah. and this is why Harry taking over and having an American way is good, because now they fix things right away. We had an air conditioner broken. We called this morning. It you know, was fixed within 10 minutes. That's because I screwed up the remote control. But <laughs> Damn that technology. Yeah, it was good. I'm, I haven't gotten there yet. You know, I'm the type of guy I have a telephone and an eight-year-old to show me how to work it. But, I'm with uh, you, though. I couldn't But that's how you it. stay relevant with the place. You stay with yeah. your friends. You do things. I mean, this, this place really is way ahead of me now. They have a wine bar, a coffee bar. These are things that I've never had here. You guys don't realize that when we first started here, we'd walk into a room and it was like walking into a dungeon. (laughs) The the room was mildew, it was old, it was dark. I told you there was a candle and a Gideon Bible. There was a divider, then you got to the bed. But I will guarantee you that people were in their room no more than six, eight hours to sleep. 
They never sat and watched TV. There was none. There was no telephone. There was no nothing. I mean, it was really, really great. Do you think that contributed to the culture of the people being the centerpiece of this Louisville? place? Was crazy even before it became hedonism. Yeah. I mean, it was crazier. And I think I mentioned to you that I hired somebody to quiet it down a little bit. <laughs> you know, in the early days, they used to have a bulletin board that had what kind of sex was going on in each room. Oh wow! And uh, they used to have. Uh, All right, Harry, bring that back. <laughs> they used to have a deal where they had lunchtime spin because they never had grills on the beach here. So everybody went up top and they had lunchtime spin where they had games that were crazy. Uh, they'd put a girl in the middle of the floor, put whipped cream on it, and invite all the guys to come down and lick it off of her. Uh, the games were pretty crazy. They had wet t shirt contests, they had uh, just crazy contests that everybody had a good time. And as I mentioned to you, the coordinators were a lot different than. than you know, they were more orientated to our games and having fun, not so much orientated to being entertainers. Fair not enough. that we'll these people aren't good. They're great people. They're, they're amazing. Talented, yeah. they're, they're, they've been hired for a different reason than they used to be. Yeah, and that's Winston. Winston has really changed the, the yeah. profile. Yeah. Uh, We've known Winston since he started. He's been here about 18 years. And I have pictures of him when he just started with Diane. And it's funny. He looked like a little kid. A yeah. little shy little kid. You know. Well, look I at Denise. Have... What's Denise doing now? Denise working in the office now. Yeah. She's getting older, and it's time, it was time for her to move on. Yeah. Uh, you can't be an EC for all your life because you can't work 16 hours a day your whole life. Yeah. And that's yeah. what they do. And it's high intensity. I mean, they're on their feet. They're dancing. They're putting on shows. Yeah. They're doing games. I mean, it's, well, a, it's lot a lot of people. This week, uh, Ricardo moved on, and a couple of weeks ago, Ashiel moved on. And Ashiel and Ricardo were great dancers. They were fantastic yeah. dancers. Yeah, Ricardo they, in particular. Yeah. But they are getting older, and you, you need a career. Yes. Winston, on the other hand, they kept him here by making him manager of uh, yeah, yes. entertainment. Well, he because could have left here and gone to New York. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We've often talked about this. Uh, he's really entertaining. But he's a big fish in a little pond, rather mm-hmm. than be a, you know, a, a little, little fish, fish in the biggest big pond. pond. Yeah. Because yeah. it's hard to break in in New York. Yes, it is. You know, because we've often talked to Winston about moving on, and he's happy here. Uh, he likes what he's doing. He's very entertaining, and he hires good people. And he's he's made it. Uh, the show's a great thing now. Uh, he, he's utterly tremendous. And you know, we speaking of some of the new hires. Uh, was it Tamara last night? Tamara, yeah. uh, Tamara is is brand new and just as fresh faced as she can be, and she's so sweet. And then Shaboy, a self taught dancer who is just looks like uh, uh, would you say lyrical? Yeah. And the, they're lyrical also lucky crazy. because Winston's willing to work with these people yes. for singing. Uh, he's made Miguel tremendous. Yes. Right? You didn't know Miguel when he first started singing, but. He was it wasn't so hot. <laughs> but he is really good now, and, and he's a star in Jamaica now. He has a couple records out, and um, he's big time. That's nice. amazing. He's actually going to sing at Sunsplash next year. Nice. So think about that for a second, the opportunities that this resort is creating for local entertainers here in Jamaica, right? Because they have a resource like Winston to help you know cultivate this culture of entertainment, whether it's dance, whether it's singing. Uh, I mean, these people are amazing, and some of them. I mean, take Ashley Martin for example. She was an EC, yeah, back in the day. Got fired five or six times. Yes, she did. <laughs> but she never left for her tremendous <laughs> attitude, right? <laughs> but Ashley Martin, who was up on stage yes, with I me, she did a great uh-huh. job. We when we so uh, we hosted. Bye, bye sweetheart. We hosted the largest nude party in the history of hedonism. We were the hosts for that party at the pool. Okay. That's, that was the no, largest that nude was pool the one party. the other day? Yeah. yeah. On Wednesday, was it was ours. the largest nude pool party in the history of hedonism. Wow. Mallory and I hosted it. Good. And I thought that was so cool to be able to do that. But And then Ashley jumped up and hosted it with us, and she emceed it with me. Good. And I'm sitting here looking at Ashley going, this is happening to me right now. <laughs> this girl's a fashion designer. She's an actress. She's a singer. And she started right here on the side of this pool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she did. I was I was here obviously when she was the EC, but uh, a lot of the ECs went pretty big time. Uh, entertainers too. There was an entertainer by the name of AJ Brown. I don't know if you ever heard of him, but he used to entertain here in the early days, and he's done Vegas. I used to go see him in the in Vegas once in a while, and it's fun when they recognize you. 
gave us a nice seat and everything. <laughs> nice. And, but it cost to me a lot of money playing blackjack. <laughs> <laughs> they, blackjack uh, costs everybody a it's lot. It's a good effort. Georgia Brown started off at uh, Georgia Henry. She started off at Hito. She was part of Roots Explosion. Really? Yeah, her husband then, her boyfriend, owned it. And he, uh, I guess they got divorced and she went on her way. But she went she went and started touring all around. It was Melvin Williams, the guy who plays in the piano bar now, Dave. Huh? Yes. He used to play for Melvin Williams back 20, 25 years ago. No kidding. Yeah, he was, he was actually not part of Roots Explosion, but he used to back up Melvin. So for those of you that don't know who are listening at home or on your ride to work or wherever you listen to Casual Swinger, Roots Explosion is the house band at Hedonism. So question for you about Roots Explosion. How often do the staff change? Often. Often. <laughs> often. Yeah. Very often. They Since the early days, they've had trouble getting a good lead singer. Because when they get a great lead singer, they leave. They go with another band. Right. Um, A.J. Brown now, well, he wasn't part of Roots Explosion, but A.J. is actually part of Third World now. He's their lead singer. Uh, okay. But they they come and go very quickly. This guy's been here probably six months, eight months. Before then, they had a guy that was just out of this. Well, it wasn't so good, but before him, they had somebody who was out of this world. They just seemed to move on. It's a good showcase for them. The, the other reggae singer that, that plays here regularly on Jamaica Night. Peter Lloyd. Peter Lloyd. Peter Lloyd yeah. is actually, uh, his agent is actually Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Harry decided to take him on, and he comes here once a month on uh, Jamaica Night. We and saw him again yeah. this time, which is our fifth time seeing Peter yeah, Lloyd. Very he's very talented. He's, he's amazing. Yeah. So he's, Harry actually manages him, and uh, it was a good choice. But Harry's willing to help people. And, uh, so does Harry have any other people. ties to the resort? I don't know why I didn't know does who ties other than the fact that Harry manages them? Okay, but um, he Harry's just willing to help people. I've seen him. Well, he's come to our reunion, and uh, as a uh, prize for Winston and uh, Diana. Diana, one time took him to the uh, Music Video Awards in New York. That's awesome. And the second year Winston came, they brought him. Would they go see Hamilton? Hamilton. Hamilton. Nice. So Harry takes good care of his people. Really good care. You know, we heard that this week. We did. From staff, yes. There's a guy uh, on my site. His name is Fada. Uh, I forgot what his regular name is. But he made a comment that uh, these people that don't appreciate Harry should start to appreciate him. He pays these people twice as much as what they got when he was here. Wow. He says that he pays them very well. He bonuses them. He, he loves his employees, and that's very, very important. Or before, when super clubs had the employees, they had no idea who worked for them. You know, the GMs did, but uh, the owners had no clue. There's a saying in business that people don't quit companies. They quit managers. Yeah. Yep. And, and I think Harry understands that very well. Well, yeah. Right? And I think, and of course, you know, the big boss sets the tone. And everybody else follows in step. That's true. Uh, That's whether true. you're a father, or whether you're a business owner, or whether you're just a manager of just a couple of people. I, I look forward to see what the next upgrade's going to be, because yeah. the rooms are done. Now they're working on the uh, community room, and I think that's going to be uh, two people are going to do massage and stuff in there, and uh, the tantra stuff. So that's and the, the former squash courts, right? Yeah, they were squash courts that were never used. Well, because they're, what was it, six people on the planet play squash? I actually used it a lot here. Really? Yeah, because it rained a lot when so we came here over our anniversary. <laughs> Truthfully, every anniversary we had here, it rained. No kidding. Yep, everyone was. The last two years, it's been pretty good. That time of year. Everyone huh? rained. They had to move everything inside. Well, uh, you know, with my voice being what it is, I'm going to let Mallory take us out. But, Howard, I want to make sure that you know how much she and I appreciate your time. And not just your time here with us, but what you've done here at the resort and what you do outside of this resort to help continue appreciate the awareness. It. Why don't yeah, you take I, us out and yeah, let people know? I can't say that any better. Uh, thank you so much, Howard. So, thank you guys for listening. I'm Mallory. That's Mickey. You can find us at casualswinger.com or anywhere you can search Casual Swinger, which is SLS. Twitter, Facebook, Cassidy, SDC, and 
I'm missing one. Oh. I, I, <laughs> but I, you guys know where we are. That's right. And you know what? We're going to put a link in our synopsis that lets you know where to find Howard in his Hedo reunion group. So if you want to learn more about this place, you want to talk to the man, the myth, the legend yourself, you can do that. We're going to put that in the synopsis for you. And uh, we'll come at you with some more Casual Swinger here shortly. Welcome back to Casual Swinger, guys. I'm Mallory. And I'm Mickey. And we just want to thank you uh, for listening to these special episodes regarding the living history of hedonism. We hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, that was uh, Howard Herenstein you just heard from. And if you haven't followed him yet on Facebook, go check it out. They have a little group called the Sandy Hook Reunion uh, on Facebook. So you can go check those guys out. And uh, if you're a hedonist, if you've been to Hedo before and you love Hedo, go check it out. And uh, that'll do it for this episode, right? Yes, it will. I'm going to go find a dirty banana on the beach. Oh, boy. Well, hey, find us a Hito <laughs> if you're here and make sure you play our game, What's Under My Hat. It's on Twitter. And uh, everybody, we'll see you tomorrow with John Gross from the Fluffernutters for the Winds of Change. Woo-hoo. You've been listening to Casual Swinger. Casual Swinger.